Enjoy! Our next experiment called Forged Carbon with its own twist. Difficulties, failures and disappointments, but a worthy result in the end. Enjoy watching! First of all, we give it a good grind it out. We sand it however you want. But if we say it right, we do abrasive machining, in our case with a sandpaper. Such an operation is done either to level the surface or to create adhesion. Adhesion is the ability of the paintwork to adhere firmly to the surface to be painted, in our case with the head. To put it simply, initially the head was covered with incomprehensible semi-gloss soil, and with the help of sandpaper we have created conditions for adhesion, and now the applied varnish will be guaranteed to stay on the surface. But first we remove small flaws, or rather such bumps. Then it remains to degrease and apply the first coat of varnish, automotive acrylic varnish. In this case, the varnish will play the role of glue. The choice is not random here. We know this material well and understand it perfectly. And finally, the most interesting thing. While the varnish is not dry, we threw a brass leaf on it. In our case, gold color. Let me say right away that this is our first experience with this material. But it's basically what you see in the video. But experience, like sexual impotence, comes with the years. And looking ahead, I'll say that Andrew waited for him. Well, he waited for the experience, of course. And each new piece is put better and faster. So, what is this all about? In fact, brass leaf is an imitation of gold leaf. That is, there is exactly the same material, but it consists of gold. In this case, it's too expensive, and we use imitation. It is also metal, but not precious. Such a very thin sheet of metal alloy, which is very similar in color to gold. In the final, we fixed this golden layer with a thin layer of varnish. The next stage is elimination. To do this, we take optical fiber and cut several hundred of these rods. What's the idea here? Initially, we wanted to get this result, but to modernize it a little. The fact is that the blast leaf glows very cool by itself when light hits it. But when there's no light, it's almost invisible. This is a problem we wanted to solve with the help of optical fiber. How does it work? We collect the fiber rods into bundles, which we shrink. Then we fix it in such a metal ring, which in turn connects to the backlight system with an RGB controller. But in order to bring the fiber to the front side of the head, we drill a hole. As a result, all communications will be neatly located inside, and only the necessary amount of fiber will come out. First, the drill is thinner, and then we drill stepped. The next step is to connect the optical fiber to such a thing, which was created specifically for these purposes.
after an hour of work, 18 bundles are out on the front side. Now it remains to decompose and fix them over the entire area. According to the idea, the glowing tips of the optical fibers should illuminate the places where the blast leaf will remain, and will cover everything else with carbon. For a clear understanding, I show a picture. That's about the effect, but places with gilding should glow in the dark. At least that's how we imagined and planned it. But Superglue had other plans. In the end, after a week of work in the hood, it became clear that superglue destroys fiber optics, and it glows a lot worse. We did a couple more tests, and it became clear that this light wasn't going to be enough. In the end, you have to redo everything, study and make new samples. By the time, frankly speaking, the desire to do this was gone, and we sent this copy to the warehouse until better times. When something goes wrong with us, we're always rescued by the old proven res. Here we decided to take as a basis the head for the previous issue, in which we described the whole process in detail. So now in a few words. With the help of a matrix, we made a similar head, but already from fiberglass matting. The only nuance is that we've eliminated all opaque materials that would normally be used in this technology, specifically gel coat and primer. Of course, this is a little more complicated and longer, but in this case it's necessary. By the way, we used ordinary glossy varnish instead of primer. As a result, we got such a blank that perfectly transmits light. But in order for the picture to look uniform, we've covered the head with a thin layer of grey graphite base paint, which is as similar as possible to the color of carbon. This layer gives the desired color, but still perfectly transmits light. Actually, that was what we needed to be proved. Finally, we turn to the most interesting. Working with carbon. In order to get this effect, you have to use carbon with this kind of light checker. In our case, the squares are 0.9 by 0.9 inches. The next step of the 3 square meters of carbon has to be cut into a few thousand of pieces like this. In the end, it took a fifth Andrew Wicks, and the next day you can to glue the so-called forged carbon. It's glued to polyester to resin, layer by layer, piece by piece. So what is carbon in general, and how is it made? Carbon fibers are made by heat treatment of the finest carbon filaments with subsequent carbonation, that is, heat in a nitrogen environment, and graphitization, that is, carbon saturation to increase strength. And carbon fabrics are already produced by weaving yarns or ribbons. It's not a quick and expensive process. Carbon was originally developed for the sports, automotive and space technology. Almost like in our case. But because of its properties, such a lightweight and high strength, it has also become very popular in other industries. For sports equipment, medical equipment and many other industries. But in our case it's still deco. The next step we need to achieve the most even surface, which we are going to varnish. That is, we need to build up thickness with transparent resin. The carbon fibers were sketched chaotically. Somewhere they hit one on one, and somewhere there were three layers of them. Accordingly, all of this has a little bit of a bumpy surface. That's why we're now sanding down some bumps, tops, some rubbish. And tar the hood. We're tarring several layers. And one more tip. If some place turned out to be not so good after all, for the next stage of tarring the hood we can safely cover with a new slice of carbon and tar it more and that's it. We sand with a coarse 120th sandpaper safely, don't be afraid. In fact, as Andrew said, so he did. We sanded the hood, but you have to feel the fine line, so you don't rub the carbon. That is, we leave some large craters as there is no point in sanding them, because there's a stain to be sanded. 
controlling everything with degreaser, that is, a matte surface, you can't see anything. We pour the degreaser. And that's how we catch the moment when we should stop. We dilute another batch of resin and pour it all over the hood. Initially, the carbon fiber flakes we glued on polyester resin. We've already achieved the lens effect with regular lithium epoxy resin. And an important rule of thumb, epoxy is glued to polyester, and polyester on epoxy isn't glued to epoxy. We pour like from a glass and I'll shrink it with a soft spatula. In the end, Andrew put the hood in several coats of varnish and left it to dry. In the meantime, we were onto the last element, specifically the backlighting. As you may recall, our hood is made of fiberglass matting, and it lets the light through. The pieces of carbon are laid out such a way that there are gaps between them which will light. And in order for them to glow, Alexi puts up tens of meters of LED address tape. As you understand, this is exactly the same scheme that we used in the previous video with the luminous hood. Everything is taught in detail there. If you haven't watched it, I highly recommend it. As a result, we connected two parts of the hood, threw it on the car and got this result. Be sure to write your opinion. How do you like this tuning? Like, subscribe and comment this video. Thanks for watching and catch positive attacks from the axe.